Hey everyone, this is Ivan from Yellowfin, and in this video, I'll present some of the key highlights from the 9.2 release. Introduced in Yellowfin 9 as beta, the all-new JavaScript API is now generally available in the 9.2 release. For this report, I have taken the embed link and pasted it into the HTML for this page. Let's have a look at some of the changes here. Firstly, an updated user interface in line with the v9 look and feel. This includes native tooltips and more interactivity like Drill Anywhere, series selection, and chart brushing. The enhanced JavaScript API also contains a much richer set of functions and events that can be listened to to trigger other actions. In this particular example, the filter object here has several event listeners and allows you to execute your own code when filters are applied, reset, or cleared. The JS API can be used when embedding Yellowfin or used within Yellowfin in dashboard code mode. In the wiki, check out the developer toolkit for the full list of API definitions. The new REST API also makes its debut in 9.2 providing support for administrators that want to automate backend processes, perform admin tasks, and manage content programmatically. For example, in this third-party app, we perform SSO and with the REST API, retrieve the list of signals for this tenant. And in this table, showing store performance, the REST API is also used to incorporate signal annotations into the tooltips for each relevant store. Upon clicking the Explore button, the API then retrieves the respective signal. In this other example, the new REST API is also used to list all available stories into the third-party app, and if you click on it, it retrieves and shows the selected story. Now that's just a few examples of using the REST API, but you can now build custom experiences around signals, stories, collaboration, notifications, and more. The API is exposed as an open API YAML spec and you can generate client stubs by passing it through an open API code generator for your language of choice. One of the first things you may notice on your dashboards and presentations in this release is a new icon on the toolbar. This activates full screen mode, enabling dashboards and presentations to utilize more screen estate by having the surrounding menus, header and footer fade away. This is useful for customers who display real-time dashboards or conduct presentations on TV screens. In Yellowfin 9, we introduce dashboard action buttons, enabling our customers to build custom and seamless operational workflows into their dashboards. Due to popular demand, we have expanded the action button functionality to all other dashboard canvas widgets, including text, images, icons, and shapes. This means that any dashboard canvas widget can now be made actionable and trigger events when clicked on. As part of this enhancement, we have also added two new event types within Yellowfin. Go to URL to navigate to an external URL and go to Subtab to navigate to any subtab within a dashboard or slide within a presentation. Let's make this click go to the fourth slide and preview this presentation. And there you go can now make all of your Canvas widgets actionable. Another improvement in 9.2 is the introduction of default bookmarks for dashboards. Dashboard consumers can now save personalized default filter bookmarks that will automatically be applied to the dashboard when first loaded or if the dashboard filters are reset. These default bookmarks can also be shared with other users and groups. Next, Filter values applied on the dashboard will also be retained when maximizing any report with similar filters, so you no longer need to reapply them at the report level. Furthermore, we have added navigational buttons to quickly return to the dashboard. For dashboards which contain widgets layered closely or on top of each other, new settings have been added to control the visibility of menus that pop up on widgets. You can now set them to always show, never show, or only show when a user hovers on them. And this can now be applied to each widget and report on the dashboard. We have also re-implemented and improved selected dashboard functionality. Dashboard authors can now include associated reports as a dashboard widget, adding associated reports as links in their dashboards rather than displaying full reports. 
This new widget offers an enhanced drag and reorder experience and can be placed anywhere on the canvas dashboard. Last and certainly not least, the columns on your dashboard reports can now be sorted in ascending or descending order. For the data discovery product, new configuration options have been added in the admin console to define default limits for the number of rows to preview data as it built in the report builder and the number of resulting rows returned for active and published reports. Let's see how this works. Now this report has over 7600 rows, so let's drag in store name and look at the data by stores. This is going to immediately hit the preview limit as you can see. But when I publish the report, it follows the active row limit and returns the full number of rows for this query. This improves the report building experience for authors who only need a sample size of large data sets during the building phase. These default limits are initially set at the admin console to be applied to all reports, but as you can see here, they can also be changed at the individual report level. In 9.2, it is now possible to define a calculated fields resulting data type upfront, such as numeric, Boolean, text, or date. In this scenario, the platform will not perform the validation test against the data source and is particularly useful when such queries are expensive. The option to allow the platform to determine the data type is also still possible by choosing the auto detect option. As part of this enhancement, we have also included the ability to set descriptions for calculated fields that allow its purpose and formulas to be described to report writers and consumers. For report filters, we have introduced dynamic filter values. This auto selects the first value for any dimension filter it is applied on. Particularly useful in situations where a user does not have the default value available to them due to role level security. In 9.2, we have also introduced a new broadcast scheduling type called Save to Disk. Besides receiving emails and notifications within Yellowfin, this new option allows you to save broadcast results on a local server path. Once you have set up the server path within the admin console, this new option becomes available to you. Simply select the file type, give it a name, add any additional delivery rules, and submit. Scheduled tasks that deliver content, such as report broadcasts, now maintain a history tab. Previously, only the most recent run status was shown here. In 9.2, it is now possible to see the run status of every historic run. Not only that, every run displayed here also shows which users successfully received content and which did not. Let's have a look at an unsuccessful broadcast here. For those who did not receive it, it is also now possible to view the errors for unsuccessful deliveries. Introduced in Yellowfin 9, step change signals are now generally available in this release. A step change occurs when a time series of data moves from one stable pattern to another one that is either above or below the previous pattern and exceeding a threshold amount. While spikes and drops highlight rapid changes in data, step changes can highlight more profound and enduring shifts between stable periods. Part of the signals algorithm library, this new algorithm now appears as a sub-option within the outlier type signal job. And that's it for key highlights today. For all other enhancements and improvements in Yellowfin 9.2, you can view the release notes on our website and join the conversation in our community. Don't forget to check out our wiki, blog, and resources page for more information on the Yellowfin suite. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.